Hi, so in this video I'm going to cover our custom framing options. It's basically a how-to video or a how-it's-made video. Um, I've got a picture of my daughter here that my carpenter made a frame for and I recorded the whole process. So This is that. It's pretty fascinating. This guy is an artist in his own right. I'm lucky to have him uh, working alongside me. Um, this is definitely something I couldn't do myself. So, literally we're starting with a block of wood. Christian is cutting one inch strips. Um, this wood is one and three quarters deep. So the frame will be one and three quarters deep with a one inch cap, uh, which basically the face of the frame is one inch wide exactly. So, with this one inch strip, now he's just routing what's called the rabbit. And that's basically where our glass and our print are going to live in that little notched um, area of the wood. I don't recommend trying this at home. Christian is a professional, so I'm assuming he feels comfortable doing this. I know I would not want my fingers that close to a rotating saw. Um, this is known as a Pistorius. It's a 45 degree miter saw. Basically cuts perfect 45 degree cuts. So that's it. We've got our frames ready to go. Or ready to be joined. So this is the joining stage. Basically he's using a V-nail gun to put a V-nail into the corners. He's also using wood glue. And in a second he's going to use the stapler that's in the foreground here. So again the V-nails, wood glue. and a stapler to reinforce the, the corners. Uh, it's really important if you do try to do this yourself that the table is completely flat, otherwise your frame, frame will be crooked. So this is our um, closed corner, as it's called, or joined corner. So I found out uh, fairly, I just call these handmade frames, but I found out from a old school framer that this is called closed corner framing. Um, the idea is that the frame is made, um, then it's sanded and finished after it's been joined. Um, any frame store that you walk into, it's, it's gonna be the opposite. They're gonna take molding that's already been um, finished essentially, and it just gets cut and then joined, that's it. In this case, we're basically building the frame and then sanding down the frame and then finishing it. So it's a completely different process um, from what I'd call conventional framing. So there's a finished frame upside down. Um, Christian is starting the paint process. You know, even the paint process is done by hand. Um, I looked into the possibility of getting some sort of sprayer, but um, the thing with that is then you lose the texture of the wood. So Christian's process here is basically just one simple coat, um, a very light coat. That way the, the texture of the wood still shows through. So it's al almost like a stain. So, you know, to go through the process of hand making these out of wood and then just covering that wood with paint, it seems a shame. So, you can kind of see the texture here, that wood texture that's showing through. There's another shot. So, again, closed corner. Um, 
Um, that's something you just can't, can't get with conventional framing. Uh, we will be offering conventional framing at some point in the near future. So I'm, I'm not trying to uh, say that it's not a good way to go. Um, there's advantages to both. And obviously cost is a big factor in any framing job. Actually, I'm going to stop myself there. So what he's doing now is um, these are spacers. Essentially, they're just pieces of Sintra that he's cut into strips. They're about three quarters or five eighths tall and it's one quarter inch Sintra. So they just get glued in there. The Plexi has been installed um, with about an inch of the paper pulled back. This is uh, done so he can install spacers without attracting too much dust onto the Plex until he's ready. So it's just dusting off again, so the spacer's installed. And now he's going to start to take off the rest of the paper on the Plex. Speaking of which, there's a lot of debate about Plex versus glass. Um, it's really a subjective thing. I prefer Plex for a whole host of reasons. It seems like most of the framing community has moved to Plex, but um, people do still like glass. Um, and I, I get that. There's a tactile sort of feeling to glass that's kind of hard to beat. Um, the problem with glass is it's, it's really hard to work with. It breaks. Um, it's impossible to ship. So, um, And Plex, I think there's this conception that it's cheaper, but it's actually not. And it's just as optically clear. So it, ultimately, I feel like it's just a better material, especially with large prints. With large prints, for sure, um, you really have to go with Plex. Anything over 30 by 40 should be Plex, in my, in my opinion. 36 by 48 max for glass. So he pulled off the rest of the paper, made sure there was no dust with his air gun, um, dropped in the print, and now he's putting in these frame tabs. Um, the pattern is basically either side, either side, and then the corners. So that's it. The frame is pretty much done at this point. Um, it's going to peel off the front. It's worth noting, um, the step he did before where he dropped the piece in, it's really important that it's a dust-free environment. Uh, this room is actually positively charged as far as airflow, which means there's a fan that's blowing air into the room, filtered air, and then that air, that, the airflow is so strong it's getting pushed right back out um, through other filters. So essentially it's cleaning the air and pushing all the dust out. Um, it's important with framing that when you drop that print in there that um, you're not also dropping a ton of dust in there because it's never going to come out. Once this thing gets sealed, it's, it's sealed. So this is uh, double-sided tape, acid-free. He's just um, coming back the release liner, and then he's going to drop it on this acid-free craft paper. So that's our frame. Um, now it's just a matter of some sort of mounting hardware. Um, larger frames, you don't use a wire usually. Um, this is about a 24 by 36. So this is a D ring with a wire. So here you can kind of see the texture of the wood again. 
that's showing through that just simple one coat of paint. Like I said, almost like a stain. Just looks gorgeous. Um, one of my clients saw it and said it just looks it looks expensive. Um, speaking of which, I'm sure that's what's on everyone's minds is this must be really expensive. But um, what surprised me actually was it's it's comparable um, to custom framing. Certainly, New York custom framing prices uh, pretty comparable. So here we have the finished frame. That's available in a couple different colors. Thanks for watching.